Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin the funeral service. We ask for those that have a cell phone or pager if you could turn it to the silent mode. Officiating today is Rabbi Gross. Before we begin, I'll take note that today is uh, Erev Rosh Chodesh. We are sure in the new month of Shabbat tonight. And as a result of that, um, Halacha dictates that when we have a funeral, Olavaya on the afternoon before Rosh Chodesh, the service is somewhat abbreviated. Um, you'll notice that, for example, there'll be no Kamale at the service, which is probably the most uh, prominent uh, feature that most people are familiar with, but will not be uh, recited today. We begin, uh, we do begin with the Perak of Tehillim, with the chapter of Psalms. Mizmola David Adonai Royal Oaxar Benos Deshi Arbitseni Amai Menuchos in Aleni Nafshi Yeshove Vyancheni Vemaglet Sedek Laman Shemo Gam Ki Eilach Begeit Salmaves Lo Ira Ra Ki Atu Imadi Shivta Chomishanta Chohimi Nachamuni Taroch Lafan Eshochon Neget Zoray Tishanta Vashem and Roshi Koisi Rivaya Achtov Echesed Yudifuni Koyim Mechayai Veshavti Beves Adonai Lo Orch Yamim a psalm for David, Hashem is my shepherd, I shall not lack. In lush meadows he lays he lays my lays my down lays me down beside tranquil waters. He leads me, he restores my soul, he leads me to paths of justice for his namesake. Though I walk in the valley overshadowed by death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in view of my tormentors. You anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Hashem for long days. <clears throat> We are gathered here to pay our final respects to Gidda Bas Yosef, Mrs. Anita Etzman, Allah Shalom, wife of the late, late Reuben Lionel Etzman, mother of Yolanda and Mervyn Kapinski, Sharon Etzman, and David and Ira Etzman, grandmother of Justin and Lada, Samantha and Robbie, Max and Naomi, Yoni and Sarolea, Shira and Asanel, Talia, Tara and Libo, great grandmother of Kayla, sister of Shirley and Carl Frankel, Richard and Linda Siegel, Yvonne and Carl Moss, Lara and Gary Cowber. Anita Etzman was born in South Africa in the years leading up to World War II. There she married her husband, Ruby. They were married for 43 years until Ruby's passing. Together they had three children that grew into the beautiful family that she leaves behind. She immigrated to America when she was over 70 years old and had been here ever since. My own interaction with Mrs. Etzman consisted primarily of a brief phone conversation that took place only a few days ago. But in that short conversation, it was clear that I was speaking to a woman who, though very sick, was emotionally and mentally strong, but at the same time had a quiet dignity that defined her essence. When assessing a person's life, the best place to look is that the footprint that that person leaves behind. I have known David for many years and have had many discussions with Ilana as of late, and I'm sure what I see in them is true of Sharon as well. They are all refined people and sensitive people, respectful of Jewish tradition and respectful and loving to each other. To say that they were devoted to their mother would be an understatement. In this last difficult chapter of her life, the hospital staff came to know each family member by name. They remarked that they didn't know of any other family who took care of a loved one like they did. This kind of kibbut aim, this kind of love and respect on the part of children towards their mother, does not happen in a vacuum, and perhaps it's more about Anita Etzman than anything else. That love of children towards their mother is apparent in the way they remember her. The qualities that we see in the children are the very ones that they saw in their mother. The words they use are quiet, unassuming, and strong. She never sought the limelight, but instead made her impact in a quieter way. She was a good listener, a comforter, and a role model as to how to deal with adversity in the face of the many challenges she faced in life. 
An example would be in 2010, when she lost everything that she had amassed over a lifetime in a flood in Nashville. But instead of being crushed, in the words of her children, she soldiered on. The same could be said of the last 30 years, during which she faced many serious health issues, which she did not let stand in the way of her living her life. She was that type of person who put other people at ease. She had an open and welcoming home and was a great cook. She hated conflict and would take on the role of peacemaker whenever there was a need for one. Her greatest love was, her fa- was for her family, into whose lives she brought only light, and they loved her in return. Her great gift to her children and grandchildren is the memories that they have of her and the life lessons that those memories hold for them and for future generations. Yehi zichra baruch, may her memory be a blessing. We're now going to hear from Sharon, followed by David. A woman of valor, a woman of virtue. My mom, my dearest friend. There is not enough time or words to adequately describe who you were and what you meant to us all. For me, you will be eternally my best friend. Your grace, compassion, and fortitude molded me to who I am today. And you continue to take care of me by thoughtfully leaving your readers in every room of our home. Being the firstborn to German refugees who escaped Nazi Germany to South Africa, your early years were not without hardship. I remember you telling us that no one ever read to you as a child because there were no German children's books and Omi and Opa had yet to learn English. Once you learned to read, You were the one who taught your parents to read and write in English. For the rest of your life, you were always reading or listening to audiobooks which you felt made up for not having been read to as a child. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. They're fogging up. You always had an instinctive ability to lend an ear and comfort others. This led to many exceptional friendships that endured for more than 70 years. You were like a lighthouse in a stormy sea, a beacon of light and safety. You always had time for us kids as we navigated our turbulent teens and the journeys through adulthood. As an active listener, you many times talked us off the proverbial ledge, some more than others, but I'll leave it at that. As an active member of the Women's Benevolent Society in Johannesburg, you set an example for us by contributing to the care of the elderly and the needy people in the community. I also have very fond memories of helping you and the other women in our shul cook and bake for many communal functions. Incredible friendships were built that stood the test of time and distance. More than 32 years ago, you faced a life-challenging battle. Your doctors told you then You had limited time, as no one had survived the ordeal you faced. With courage, determination, and strength of will, knowing that you had the support of your family and friends, you set about on a path that defied all odds. Not only did you survive, but somehow you endured. As you learned to listen to your body and adapt to its needs with little help from the medical specialists, who were always amazed when you told them your history. Despite your daily debilitations, you set about life with grit and grace, (coughs) never complaining. Most often, those around you were not even aware of what you faced on a daily basis. Living the last 13 years with you since we immigrated to America has been my privilege, not without its challenges. From the devastating flood of our Nashville home and subsequent loss of our treasured family mementos, to relocating to Chicago, your fortitude was something to behold. As best friends and traveling buddies, we enjoyed many adventures together, of which I have cherished memories. Your infectious laugh and easygoing manner put all who met you at ease. 
I fondly recall how many times you and I laughed so hard it took our breath away. Your resiliency in the face of adversity was something to behold. <laughs> Whenever you had a setback, you shrugged it off and soldiered on. <laughs> this past year was particularly challenging for both of us. I am so blessed that you got to see me complete my chemo journey <laughs> and had peace of mind knowing that I am in remission. <laughs> I know we are both deeply grateful to Lana, David and their families who carried us while we were both in hospital. <laughs> December 2021 20, was the hardest month of my life. <laughs> Mom, you were there for my first breath, and I'm so honored to have been there for your last. Know that I love you to the moon and back, always. Oh. Seems like the rabbi and my sister have said most of my speech for me, but I'll try again. How does one thank a person who has done kindness for me, my siblings and family all of our lives? My mom was born in Johannesburg just before the Holocaust to German parents who left before the war. South Africa was one of the few countries that had more liberal immigration laws, and my grandparents always had a cross of gratitude to the country for that that Mida stayed with our family. Four days after my mom was born, Jews celebrated Purim when our nation was miraculously saved from the wicked Haman. A few weeks later, a few, sorry, a few weeks after my mom's hospital confinement, we celebrated Hanukkah, where a handful of Jews miraculously defeated the mighty uh, Greek army and were able to light the menorah for eight days with one day's supply of oil. Mom, our light, you celebrated a miraculous life. After suffering a devastating medical trauma, your doctors advised you to get your affairs in order as he felt you did not have long to live. Yet over 33 years later, you outlived him. You are a medical marvel that made your doctor's jaws drop when you explained your medical history. You ended up knowing more than them and always quipped that they should be paying you for what you could teach them. You taught by example with a gentle, regal demeanor that drew the affection of all who knew you. You maintained your composure throughout, despite your hardship. You taught us right from wrong, how encouraged I was when I discovered that much of what you had taught was already part of our Jewish heritage. You always tried to see the good in everything. Even in the past month, as you lay in your hospital bed, <coughs> you so appreciated the nursing staff and caregivers, calling them your angels. You loved all your grandchildren and made each one of them feel so special. You felt privileged to see your great-grandchild. Justin, <coughs> thank you for organizing Mom's caregivers for the past few weeks. Between them and our families, Mom had 24-7 care. The hospital staff knew us by name. Mom called the good ones her angels. Last night, the hospital staff said they, did, they didn't know of any other family who took care of a loved one like we did. To my sisters, Ilana and Sharon, thank you for everything you did for mom. You were always there for her, and she told me how happy and proud she was of both of you. Mom, I want to ask Mechila forgiveness for all the times that I did not conduct, conduct myself as you had taught. I hope I made you proud for the times I got it right. We will love you. We will always love you. In your words, forever. May Hashem grant you chesed and Mechila and kindness and mercy, and give your neshama an eternal nechama, comfort and peace. This concludes the service here at the chapel. The interment will take place at Shalom Memorial Park. For those who will be joining the family in procession, we'll be lining up in a parking lot. We ask that you have your headlights and hazard lights on while in procession. At the conclusion of the interment, the family will be sitting Shiva the Etzman residence, 2815 Sherwin Avenue in Chicago. The family requests that all visitors that come to pay a Shiva call to please wear a mask. 
and respect the, the guidelines of Cook County. The family also requested the donations go to Hadassah and the Chicago Chesed Fund. That information is on our website. Please rise as we escort the casket from our chapel. Once we've left the chapel, we ask everybody to please re return to their cars.